Hi, I'm Kip from KipHakes.tv and today I'm in my living room because I'm showing you this. This is my TV and uh, I put up an unboxing video of this TV and uh, I didn't really think much about it, but it's gone absolutely mad. It's like one of the most popular videos I've ever done. And I thought what I would do is show you guys a bit more around the TV and some of the menus and what it can do just to give you a sort of taste of the inner workings because to be honest when I was unboxing it I didn't really think anyone would watch it and uh, there's been so many questions brought up so I thought let's uh, show you what's going on on the TV show the menu show the apps uh, show you a bit of how the ambilight stuff works and uh, yeah we'll go from there and also what I will do is share what picture settings I'm using at the moment because lots of people are really interested in picture settings I didn't understand it myself but yeah it seems to be quite the popular thing to know so I'll show you how I've got my TV set up and hopefully it will answer some of the questions that are under the video so uh, yeah let's have a little look now today is uh, the Brexit deal vote in the Commons so I've got the uh, BBC News channel on just, but we'll get rid of that because you, you don't want to see, you don't want to see the news, do you? You want to see the menu. So I'm just going to press the home button on the remote control. And this will show you the sort of how the menu system works. So we've got across the top here, we've got sources where you can choose which sources are, are available. Um, I will point out in this video, I don't have a terrestrial aerial or a uh, free-to-air satellite feed. So I can't show you the TV guide or anything like that, just simply because I don't have the facilities. So uh, if you wanna know about the TV guide and all that stuff, I can't help you with that, I'm really sorry. I use SkyQ for my TV, and so, you know, I, I've not even added TV channels. So right, so we've got the sources here. You can choose between uh, screen mirroring, um, I don't know, network? What's on the network? might find my amp yep it's found my amp so it can pull stuff off uh, the media server there that's quite cool didn't know it could do that i'm learning with you guys today um all right let's go back he says why is it not going back okay oh all right okay you can switch between the different inputs that's good but i still want to go back Okay, pressing the back button didn't work. I had to just press the home button. So yeah, we've got our different uh, HDMI inputs. Uh, the HDMI inputs are HDMI 2.0, not 2.1. You can watch films through the USB socket as well. Right, so watch TV, what do we, ha we have? Right, okay, well this, this bit I can't really show you because there's nothing set up, but that is essentially the sort of inbuilt TV guide and TV system. Now, this is where it gets interesting. These are the apps. Now, obviously the apps available might vary depending on what country you're in. So this is how I've got it set up in the UK. So we've got YouTube, we've got Smart TV. Don't really know what that is. We've got Netflix, we've got Prime Video, BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, Channel 4, My5, uh, Freeview Play, BBC Sounds, Rituken TV, App Gallery, uh, Chili, whatever Chili is, uh, Internet Browser, um, Amazon Alexa and demo me. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look in the app gallery and see if there's any apps there that we might be interested in. Oh, Dusk 18 plus, naughty. The apps on the Philips TV are a little lacking. Let's see what video apps we've got. I've literally never heard of these things. I've heard of QVC, I like QVC. Let me uh, say that from the get-go, there is no Des Disney Plus. It doesn't matter too much to me because I can watch that through my Sky Q, but obviously if you don't have a Sky Q or a Fire TV stick or a Chromecast, then you can't watch Disney Plus through the apps on this TV. You will need something else. Right, and also I think um, Spotify is missing as well. We've got lots of radio station apps, which is nice, but I don't think one of the biggest music streaming services in the entire world has got an app on here. Disappointing, but there's lots of different ways to listen to uh, Spotify, and I don't tend to listen to it through the TV. Lifestyle, yeah, the apps aren't great on this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is, this is just me being completely honest. Right, what have we got? So we've got search up here, what does that search? Smart TV search. 
I don't know what that does. Let's see if we can find... British TV classic Luther. Will it be able to find Luther? See, I don't know what it's actually searching. Is it searching the internet? Is it searching what's on the TV? Martin Luther... Yeah, it's just suggested Martin Luther King. Let's see what it does. There we go, so it's just found some videos on YouTube, like literally hardly anything at all to do with Luther. No, no. Right. <laughs> so uh, what I will show you now is the settings, because this is what people like to see. So we've got install channels, which does as it says on the tin. If you've got an aerial or a satellite feed connected, you can install the channels. Picture style, now this is just a quick way of switching between the different picture styles. Oh, okay, so you can just cycle between different predefined picture styles just at the press of the OK button. I don't know how well this is showing up on the camera, but I've got it on standard, I think. Picture format, again, just cycles through different things. Sound style, what is the difference in sound style? Uh, I think because I've got mine connected through my amplifier, it doesn't make any difference. Um, audio outs, there you go, you can choose whether it uses TV speakers, the HDMI sound system, headphones, you can turn the TV speakers off, or you can have it coming through the TV speakers and the headphones, fair play. I don't like how pressing the back button doesn't take you back to where you were, that's a bit annoying. So right, we've got the ambilight style. So at the moment, my ambilight is following the video. So the edges of the TV light up in correlation to the video on the screen. You can make it follow the audio of the TV, or you can just have it on lounge light. I don't know what that is. And follow flag, what's that? Oh, okay. Okay, we can have it like set up like a flag. <laughs> that, that seems a bit, you know. Um, no, I don't want to say that. I'm no, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not a flag guy. That's interesting, isn't it? So, what were the other ambi light styles? Lounge light. Oh, okay. So there you go. You can change it depending on what you fancy. I like that. That's cool. But for now, we'll just put it back to follow video. And we'll do it vivid. I like it bright. There we go. Now also there is the uh, ability to make it so it syncs up with the other hue bulbs around your house. Um, I've got that set up, but we'll, we'll look at that a little bit more in a moment. So that is this menu option here, Ambilight plus hue. We'll show you that in a bit. Then we've got sleep timer. We can just turn the uh, TV screen off. Uh, wireless and networks, we'll just go into that quickly. There you go. I mean, there are so many settings on this TV. We'll go, we'll do a deep dive on the settings in a moment. But yeah, see like, that's that's just sort of some of the network settings. I won't take you through every single menu option because we will be here for weeks. Um, right, let's just go back to that menu. There we go. Right, so let's make sure you see what we've got. Um, picture settings. Yeah, so you can jump straight into the picture settings. So yeah, let's have a little look. I've got my color set at 60. My backlight light contrast is set at 85. My sharpness is at five. My brightness is at 50. Um, and you can make it so it comes up with a little identifier on the screen that says Dolby Vision when there's a Dolby Vision feed. And there's also a quick picture setting thing. Uh, so let's look at my uh, the, the expert mode picture settings. I put the color enhancement to minimum. The color temperature is normal. The white point alignment is two point. The contrast mode is normal. Dynamic contrast is minimum. The video contrast is 80. The gamma is set at zero. Ultra resolution is on. Noise reduction is set to minimum. MPEG artifact reduction is me minimum. Now, I'm a very much in the opinion that I don't like motion styling. So you can add these different motions 
styles to the thing. And basically, I think it looks makes the TV look like everything is being sped up. So when I've got my um, gaming on, I do have it on because I don't think it looks so ridiculous in gaming. But with any of these settings, no matter what you have it on, to me, to my eyes, it makes the picture look like sped up and it really does my bean in. So I've just got that off. Lots of people have it on, but I think personally, I prefer it off, especially for watching TV and films. It just doesn't look right. I don't know quite what it's there to achieve. I'm no expert, as you probably realise, but yeah, I've always got that off. That is like one of the first things I do, like set up a TV. It's just get rid of that. Right, okay. So let's go into all settings. Now look, you can see there are a lot of settings here. I just showed you the picture. We've got sound. Um, I don't use I don't use the inbuilt TV sound because I've got an amplifier and um, seven, no, eight speakers. So I can't tell you much about the sound. I've, I've, I've heard it and it's fine. It's fine, you know. Flat panel TVs aren't ever great as a sound, but I think it's all right, actually. So let's have a little look at the Ambilight stuff. So we saw this, we saw that it um, will follow the video or the audio. We can tell it uh, if you wanted to just have a custom color, that's fine. We can set it up for a custom color. Now here we go. We can configure the hue bulbs. I've got an iris light in the corner of the room and also at the bottom of the TV unit, I've got strip because the ambi light only goes around the three sides, left, right, top, and that's it. But I've got a strip behind my TV unit, which you might be able to see, and that you can, what I've done is I've added that to the setup as well. So let's switch it on. So what I'll do is I'll just show you quickly through the configuring the hue bulbs onto your TV, which I think is quite cool. So there we go, it's connected to my network, it's connected to my bridge, and at the moment, I've got it configured to only use two out of my eight compatible bulbs. Um, and yeah, so the TV backlight is set up. Now what you can do is you can tell the TV where the light is in relation to the TV. So you can alter the angle depending on where the bulb is. So if you have lights at the side of your TV, you could choose that setting. If you've got a light at the top of your TV, you could choose that setting. So basically it picks up roughly where it, it knows what the color is at the side of that, the area of that screen and it changes the light to be that color. So um, I've got mine, you can't go right round, you have to go to all the way to the top, to the bottom. My, that TV strip is down at angle 10, which is the bottom. Now, obviously, using the hue bulb, it doesn't give you the sort of gradient of color. It is just one color. The rest of the lights around the TV have can be like, each LED can be a different color. But when you've got a light strip, they're not fully addressable. So it doesn't entirely match. So if you're a bit anal about um, how, how it looks, maybe don't have it set up like I do. Because what I find is if you're watching something and what's happening at the bottom of the screen is constantly changing, it does make the hue light strip not flicker, but change color really rapidly. If you're watching something like a drama or something like that, and it's cutting between two different people and they're like say wearing a different outfit, it kind of flashes in between the two and it can be a little bit jarring, but uh, so yeah, you can adjust the brightness of the bulb. I think, you, yeah, I think you can see that. I mean, if you wanted to keep it set up, you could just keep it at a lower brightness. I think mine's at, mine was at seven, wasn't it? There we go, and we'll finish. And there we go, so the iris, which is in the corner, which you can't see, uh, is flashing currently. And again, you can just go in. And because it's of that side of the TV, I've just set it at angle seven and that just changes in relation to what's on the TV screen. So in theory, you can have lots of hue lights around your TV, on your walls or whatever, and you can basically tell it which area, whereabouts in relation to the TV it's located, and you can have a really cool light show, which is 
which is good, I think. And there we go, finish. And there you go, it's reset to what's on the TV. So um, let me just show you sort of, because this is a bit of a kind of boring color. So if we just go onto the sky menu, you see the ambilight changes in relation to what's on the screen. Don't judge me for my TV choices. I really love the Ambilight, I really do. It looks fantastic and it's really immersive, um, especially at night. If you don't have all your lights on and you've just got the TV on, it just lights up the whole wall. It's really hard, it's been really hard to get the lighting right on this video because I kind of want to show you how everything looks, but equally, I don't want to be in darkness but I really love the Ambilight feature of the TV. What it's lacking in the old apps, it really, really makes up for in what you see in, in the Ambilight system, essentially. And if you've got Philips Hue bulbs, it really is perfect. Um, what else is there to show you? Let's see if I can get a bit of sport on. Let's get see if we can fire up a bit of sports. People are interested in sports, aren't they? See, there you go. So the ambilight around the bottom of the TV and the sides is green, and it's just matching the color of the stands there. It looks good. And this is just in HD, it's not in Ultra HD. Football uh, in Ultra HD on this looks really good, really good. And I, the problem is I can't really show you that because it's just, it's being filmed on a smallish camera, but you know, you get the idea. I mean, let's, um, I'll tell you what, let's, let's go into an app and show you a movie. I don't know how this works from a copyright point of view. I won't have the sound up, but yeah, let's go into um, Prime Video and we'll see if we can find a movie. And I do need to say, I'm, look, I'm not a TV expert. You probably know this, but I'm not a TV expert. And I'm just a guy with a TV who likes making YouTube videos. So I can't, I can't like make, I can't go too technical because I just don't understand it. Right, we've got Ghostbusters. Let's watch a bit of Ghostbusters in Ultra HD. Let's start over. Again, I won't play the sound because God, Right, and all that stuff. And I probably shouldn't even be showing you this. But this is sort of being streamed live. I fast forward. Yeah, let's fast forward a little bit. Let's get into the film. <laughs> People didn't like this Ghostbusters. I really liked it. I thought it was a lot of silly fun. Just seeing if I can get to like an action-y bit. There we go. Bit of ghosty action. See if we can do that. Now with the Ambilight, uh, what you might not know is if there's black on the screen, it sort of makes the Ambilight go sort of white. It doesn't, it doesn't turn the lights off, which is interesting. I, I don't know how I feel about that. But obviously where you've got the black bars here, it's picking out the colors at the top of the screen. Or, uh, yeah. It's not made, it's just white, like I, I said. But yeah, this is this is a UHD movie streaming and it looks really good, really good. Um, I don't know how much else there is to show you, really. There is an Ambilight button on the remote, so if it's annoying you, you can just press the Ambilight button and turn it off if you so wanted. But I quite like it. Oh, there you go, that's it following. And then we can just go, I mean, I can't, I, I don't want to bore you showing you all the apps because they're all roughly the same on your TV anyway. So yeah, we'll just go back to uh, the old sky. This is a bug in this TV. This is a bug in this TV. Where if you're watching Amazon Prime Video and then you go back to uh, HDMI, it does this. It makes it all squished and no amount of messing around with the picture does anything so what you have to do is you have to turn the tv off and then turn it back on again 
It's a very weird bug. It only happens on the Amazon Prime app. But I guess it shows you the TV turning on and off. There we go. There are, this TV isn't perfect. If, you, if you're looking for like all the apps and everything, then you're not gonna find them. And I don't know if they're coming or not. I honestly can't tell you. But if you're looking for a TV with a decent picture, like all the inputs, um, lots of different TV formats supported, then this is a really good TV. And the Ambilight, it just gives something that no other TV offers. I mean, you can get the light, you can get the Philips light strips that go around the TV, and you can get the Hue Sync box to make it all sync up with your TV. But I've seen that in action, and it looks a little bit laggy. Having it inbuilt into the TV is such an amazing thing. So if you're at all invested in the Hue ecosystem, it's really worth getting this, or even if you're not. Now, obviously my TV isn't wall mounted, and it's just about in the kind of right spot because you can't have your TV too far away from the wall because you just don't see the lights. Obviously, if the TV was closer to the wall, it would be that bit brighter, but you know, I'm happy with it. I really am happy with it. So yeah, that, that's it. I mean, I'm sorry if I haven't covered anything specifically that you wanted to know. If if you've got any questions, then just please do drop a comment. I do reply to pretty much all of them, apart from the rude ones. So yeah, if there's something I've missed or there's something you want me to tell you about, then I will do my best. But do remember, I'm just a normal guy with a TV. I'm not a TV salesman. I can't tell you if it's gonna be for sale in this country or that country when an app's coming. I just don't know. But yeah, that's it. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be back soon for some more vlogging fun. See ya!